Hey, what's up everybody, it's your boy Prothroff and today we're gonna be reacting to the Alien Biosphere Part 1, The Planet by uh, people, but, 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 yep. uh, I'm gonna do just the first part because yeah, I know the dude that suggested this said do the first part and the second part because the first part is just like an introduction but I'm feeling kind of tired my guy so we're just gonna do the first part I'm gonna do the second one part tomorrow I promise unless I die or get abducted by aliens the second part is gonna come tomorrow unless I die or get abducted by aliens so let's check it out when building a fictional world, one of the very first things to consider is what kind of animals, plants, and people are going to inhabit it. Are the life forms the same as or similar to those found on- Shouldn't you first uh, establish the planet you're building? The world, you mean like the atmosphere, the the gas, the, you know, the, what the earth, the plants compromised of, com com made up of? Wouldn't that be like the first thing so that you can establish what kind of creatures and plants are able to survive on, on it? Earth? Or are they entirely different? What's the climate like? What kind of biomes and ecosystems are present? Yes. Depending on the type and style of the world you're building, the answers to these questions can vary dramatically. But for this series, we're starting totally from scratch. Okay. We are going to evolve a scientifically feasible alien biosphere using the principles of evolution. Of course, this will all be entirely speculative, since, so far, we only know of one instance of life occurring in the universe, but any alien life would be subjected to the same laws of nature as life on Earth. So by studying our own biosphere, we can make some predictions of what aliens might be like. But before we can make an alien planet, we have to make, well, the alien planet. <laughs> as in all the non-living stuff. We've got to lay out some groundwork about what this planet is like, since this will have a heavy impact on how its resident life forms will evolve. Now, planet building can be a huge rabbit hole in and of itself, and it's kind of out of my wheelhouse, which is why I've brought Artifexian along to help. Hello! So, where do we begin? Best place is to start with a rough brief. What are you looking for? Well, since I'm going to be evolving the biosphere from the very beginning of this planet's natural history, we might want to start out with something similar to the conditions of ancient Earth, but maybe tweak a few things to subtly influence the way life develops. Keeping in mind, of course, that the further we stray from Earth-like conditions, the more complications are introduced, and the more speculative things we'll get when designing the biosphere. That's good, So though. we should probably err on the side of too Earth-like. No, 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 no. Sound good? Perfect, that's very doable. I already have a bunch of neat ideas, but first, let's start with your star. Or stars? I think one star will suit oh. our purposes just fine. Let's not get crazy. At least not yet. Alright, one star it is. Let's set the star's luminosity to 75% that of the sun. Doing so mimics the output of our sun during the Archean Aeon, 2.5 to 4 billion years ago. With the luminosity set, we can derive a number of stellar features, most notably your star's habitable zone, the region around your star where liquid water can exist on the surface of a planet. No water, no life, so knowing this zone is really important. If we have your planet orbit at a distance of 0.85 AU, its average temperature would be about 20 degrees Celsius, which is hotter than Earth, but it's nothing crazy. This will also mean that its year will be roughly 298 Earth days long. Happy so far? Pretty similar. Yeah, that works for me. With all that in the bag, we can move on to the planet itself. To construct your planet, we need to figure out its mass, radius, surface gravity, and density, all of which are related like so. Ooh, can we make it a low gravity planet? I quite like the idea of working with megaflora and megafauna. Definitely, we could keep your planet the same size as Earth, again nice and familiar, but drop the gravity to 80% Earth gravity. Hmm, could we go lower? Yeah, not really. Any lower in density would be such that your planet won't have an iron core. No iron core, no magnetic field, no life. Ah, alright then. 80% Earth gravity it is. In terms of day length and axial tilt, we know that an Earth day was much shorter in the past, and that Earth's axial tilt varies over time. So, let's make your day about 20 hours long, and give your planet 22 degrees of axial tilt. This lower axial tilt means that overall your planet will be subject to slightly reduced seasonal variation. You okay with that? Yep, as long as there's at least some seasonal variation, I'm happy. Now, what about the atmosphere? I suggest emulating Earth's atmosphere as closely as possible. Messing with the atmosphere can be, well, messy. Some might say interesting, 
Oh boy, I don't like where this is going. I mean, 1.5 billion years ago, oxygen was super low and CO2 was super high. So riffing off that, I can do something like this, but that's really not very- Ah, oh, come on. Surely we can do something more interesting than that. 80% oxygen, 10% nitrogen. Come on. How about we say 1% of the atmospheric composition is taken up by hydrogen sulfide? You want to add hydrogen sulfide? Sure. I mean, it exists in small quantities on Earth, including as a metabolic byproduct, and some organisms live off the stuff. So how about we just throw in a tiny bit extra, just to mix things up a little? Like, okay, if you insist, but just be aware that the oxygen is below what is recommended for carbon-based humanoid life forms. The CO2 is far, far, far above what is recommended or safe. And the hydrogen sulfide, well, it's not recommended at all. Don't worry, I've totally got this. Uh, I think. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> Anyways, what's left? A moon? Yes, let's just stick with one moon for simplicity Come and... Come on, can bro, we you had the chance to have like fucking 25 fucking moons. That would have been awesome. Make it so that it creates fairly large tides? Sure, one way of doing this is to place your moon close to your planet. Let's say it orbits about 50 Earth radii out which will give it an orbital period of about 23 Earth days. Also, let's make your moon 50% more massive than our moon. The increased mass and closeness will give you tides about 2.7 times greater than those we experience Jesus. on Earth. Now, obviously this will vary depending on local geography, nevertheless it is a good ballpark. Looks great. And, speaking of local geography, I think the last thing I'll need is some land masses. Since I'm going to explore a big chunk of the planet's natural history, I'll need to know how the continents are going to drift over a period of a couple hundred million years or so. As we'll see, the shape of the land has a pretty huge effect on how life develops. Sure, what are you thinking? Well, I thought it would be cool to start off with a Pangaea-like supercontinent, uh -huh. and then have it break apart into two continents, yep. only for them to rejoin later. Sure. And maybe an island continent could break off at some point as well. Done. You happy with this time scale? Yes, that looks perfect. Cool. So there you go. That's a star, cool. a planet, a moon, a totally non controversial atmosphere, and some land masses. Excellent. Thanks very much for all your help, Artifexian. It's been a pleasure having you. Not a problem. The pleasure was all mine. And if anyone is looking for more on how to construct their own alien planets, and if you've somehow never heard of Artifexian before, go and check out his channel for all the info you could ever we'll possibly do. need. Like we'll do As for my planet, I think we've got just about all the bases covered. So next up, let there be life. Okay. Okay. So we saw the planet building. Next time there will be life. I'm excited. Then we're gonna check that out tomorrow, unless I die or get abducted by aliens. Both are uh, low probability, right? Okay, hopefully. <laughs> so it's been cool. It's been pretty fun. I'm excited to see what kind of life this dude creates with the fucking sulfur and the fucking air. And I'll check y'all tomorrow. Like, comment, subscribe, and have a nice fucking day.